My name is Dylan Avery. I'm the director, writer, and you know, editor. Editor. God of Loose Change. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Corey Rowe. I am the executive producer of Loose Change, uh, executive officer of Louder Than Words LLC out of New York, which is a company that produced Loose Change Second Edition. My name is Jason Burmes. I was a uh, researcher and production assistant on the second edition of Loose Change, also an activist. September 11th happened, I woke up, went out with my friends, got some breakfast, uh, bagel and coffee, sat around, and uh, we got back to my house. Uh, me and my friend Sandy went back there just to hang out before school, and uh, we walk in the front door and she gets a call on her cell phone. Uh, you know, turn on your TV, and she's like, what channel? Her mom says, it doesn't matter what channel, just put on the TV. There was another one. We just saw, we just saw another one. Another plane just flew into the second tower. And uh, basically watched for the next two hours, just watched things happen. And uh, accepted it for what it was and went off to school and watched the tower, you know, watched Manhattan smoke for about an hour and that was my class. I went back home and I was like, well, that's interesting. And I, you know, I just, just kind of accepted it. And I was like, okay, terrorist attack. Reporters are always trained to follow the dollar, to look for the money. Who finances an operation like this took a lot of money? It took money and it took professionalism. I personally think that this had to have had a professional organization behind it. And then, you know, like, like some people, it just kind of happened and I just kind of let it, let it slide. When did you first start questioning her and what got you? May 2002, um, advice from James Gandolfini. Uh, to make a very long story short, I was building a restaurant for him. James Gandolfini, you know him as Tony Soprano. Um, I was building a restaurant for him and his childhood friend. Uh, I asked him, what do I have to do to be a successful director? And he said, you have to have an important message to give to the rest of the world. And it was that point when I started thinking about 9-11, started thinking, well, you know, 9-11 is the most recent, you know, huge event I could think of. So that was the one thing I started to write on. And doing my research, it just became apparent that things didn't add up. Because uh, I originally intended writing a fictional script about you know myself and my friends discovering what you see in the documentary that 9-11 was done basically by our own government intended for a fictional project did my research it turned into a documentary loose change is more dangerous than anything they've ever encountered I got into this I've known Dylan and me have been best friends since we were about this high I we've always wanted to make a movie we always wanted to get into Get into get into making movies, you know. We just, we just, it was just always a goal of ours. We took a, like a digital editing class when we were in high school on Macintoshes, and it really broke us into it. I mean, we used to design web pages when we were like 14 years old, just for fun, just for something to do. We we've always loved computers, um, and we Dylan wrote this fictional screenplay of us um, finding out September 11th was an, an inside job. We started shooting it while I was in the military on my leave. I, I came back up to New York for my for my vacation time um, between <laughs> between deployments, and. Uh, and we started shooting this movie, and as Dylan was writing it and we were shooting it, he kept doing research about it, you know, figure you're writing about 9-11, you better know the most about it. And so upon doing that, he came across so much information that the movie started to split off from going to, from a movie, and then we'd throw evidence in there. June 2000, October 24th, 2000, July 4th, 2001, July 24th, 2001, September 6th, 2001. And then it would break down until all of a sudden there was way too much evidence. It was overwhelming, and it was kind of out of the scheme of reality for us to make a full motion picture. You know, with one Sony eight, eight millimeter digital camera, it was ridiculous. So uh, Dylan decided to break off and make the documentary on just on a whim. And then was just gotten such a great response from from the information and the way that we present it that we, we've all of a sudden become these heads of the 9/11 movement with with the movie Loose Change, and people look to us for answers uh, when when they should be because we do a lot of research. I mean, we live this every day, 24-7. Every day to us is September 11th. Kind of fell into it by accident. I had been researching 9-11 uh, for almost probably three, three and a half years. I had bought the official version at first, and it was almost a year after that before I started to question it and uh, find the contradictory evidence that, you know, led me into 9-11 truth activism. Why do you think people that are normally critically thinking about the government can't handle thinking about 9-11? Cognitive dissonance. They they don't want to believe that much. Like people are ready and willing to believe that their government's corrupt, their government does bad things and kills people. But 
when it comes to domestic terrorism and false, yeah, they're, they're not, it's not possible at all. It's, it's not even within the realm of possibility. They won't even accept it. Like people who are all ready to put on an anti-war shirt, you know, one of the Buck, Fush, the Buck Fush shirts and go down to D.C. and protest the war, the second you start talking to them, well, you know, this whole war thing wouldn't have happened without 9-11, so what's your idea that 9-11 could have been done by our government? They're like, well, that's just ludicrous. It's like, I mean, come on. Our government has killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people based on a lie. What makes you think that 3,000 people weren't killed for a lie? So, I mean, it's just real interesting. Hasn't up inside, wasn't involved. In the press? Fox News, a and NBC, and CBS. They knew the story, they ain't let us see. A free oppressed would have reported all the holes in the lies. they controlled by the White House, and we won't open our eyes. So who's to blame? Ourselves? Yeah, justice is fair, because we apathetic and ignorant about the details. And we haven't questioned our leaders when they feeding us lies. Accepting to see this truth, and now freedom is died. <laughs> There was no need to question the commission outright. We already know the truth. It's the guard. Basically, people can't come around to the fact that 9-11 is an inside job because it's too much. We've lived comfortably for too long, and people are just not open to the idea that the U.S. government, the greatest land in the nation, I mean, we sat there and did the pledge every day at school, and, you know, we're told over and over again, we're free, it's democratic here, we have the best nation in the world. People can't come to grips that they would kill their own people in order to kill more people somewhere else. So immediately when you say that, you're a leftist, you're an anarchist, uh, you're anti-government, and I'm none of those things. It's a self. It's 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 a wound on our soil. I mean, it's 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 the, it's the greatest national tragedy. An American icon attacked and demolished to the ground. Thousands of people um, were killed instantly, and then our country accepted that for what our government told us it was. And then we invaded Afghanistan. And that was a righteous movement. It was a patriotic movement. I mean, everybody held, you know, flags from their banisters, and, and everybody was behind it because everybody believed that America was attacked by Osama bin Laden, the Taliban, and Al Qaeda, um, which you know didn't turn out to be the case. But we've we've put so much emotion into it. We've put so much time and effort and money. Our whole country was behind it. For these people to drop that and and think, my whole life, everything I believe in. If this gets swept out from under my feet, what do I have to stand on? I mean, this, this is a very big leap for people to take, and that's why loose change, it gets in there. I call it the gateway drug. I mean, it gets in there, and it'll take somebody with no information and the, with, with no idea what they're getting into, and they'll watch the movie, and 80 minutes later, they'll come out and they'll be thinking, not 9-11 was an inside job, but what if my government could lie to me? What if what they told me on the news wasn't true? And, and what if they always lie to me? What do you think is the best piece of information that, that breaks through the, the, the Bush administration story about 9-11? World Trade Center Building 7. I mean, you ask anybody here tonight, that's probably the most common answer you're going to get. I mean, you have a 47-story office, office building, 300 feet away from the North Tower. I mean, the things across the street, the buildings that all surrounded Building 7 were structurally intact. They didn't fall on 9-11, yet, and yet at 5.20 p.m., on September 11th, Building 7 fell straight down to the ground in its own footprint in six seconds, which if you do the math is a complete free fall. That meant there was absolutely no resistance between point A and point B. It was a controlled demolition. There's no way to avoid it. So the simple matter is, Controlled demolitions take time. They take science, they take planning, they take expertise. You cannot just wire a building willy-nilly in the afternoon of 9-11 and rig a building to fall. It doesn't happen that way. That building was wired before September 11th, probably well before September 11th. So ask yourself why. Who had the power to remove the security from World Trade Center 7? Who had the power to infiltrate World Trade Center 7 and to plant explosives inside? And who, finally, who had the capability to destroy those explosives and then, or to destroy the building and then cover the entire thing up? And then it wasn't included in the commission. And then it wasn't, the 9-11 commission doesn't even mention Building 7. It doesn't even mention it. It doesn't exist. And then FEMA. FEMA's own report on Building 7 says the, uh, the causes and specifics surrounding the collapse of Building 7 cannot be determined at this time. What, what does that mean? I'm, I don't know. It's ludicrous. And then people accept it. They're like, oh, well, the government couldn't figure it out. It's like, you're telling me the government couldn't figure out that something happened on September 11th that never happened before in history ever or after? Uh, it's, it's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous.